A 65-year-old male with a history of atrial fibrillation has been on flecainide 100 mg twice daily for the past year. He presents with symptoms of dizziness, palpitations, and mild shortness of breath, which started about four hours ago. He admits to accidentally taking two extra pills of flecainide earlier in the day, mistaking them for his other medication. The initial EKG shows a wide complex, irregular rhythm with a QRS duration of 240 milliseconds and a left bundle branch block morphology. The ventricular rate is around 90 beats per minute, slower than typically expected for ventricular tachycardia. After 300 milliequivalent sodium bicarbonate administration, a follow-up EKG shows a significant improvement with a narrower QRS complex, QRS duration decreased to 160 milliseconds, and a regular rhythm. Upon presentation, the patient's blood pressure is 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury, heart rate is 90 beats per minute, respiratory rate is 20 breaths per minute, and oxygen saturation is 94% on room air. Serum flecainide concentration is elevated at 1.5 milligrams per liter. Therapeutic range is 0.2 to 0.9 milligrams per liter. Electrolytes are within normal limits except for a mild decrease in serum bicarbonate to 21 milliequivalents per liter. Renal and liver function tests are within normal ranges. Flecainide is widely distributed to body tissues after oral administration with a bioavailability of approximately 90%. It has a volume of distribution of about 8 to 16 liters per kilogram and is 30 to 50 percent bound to plasma proteins. The drug is metabolized in the liver by cytochrome P 452D6 to inactive metabolites, with approximately 30 percent of the drug excreted unchanged in the urine. The elimination half-life of flecainide is about 12 to 27 hours, but this can be prolonged in patients with renal or hepatic impairment. In cases of toxicity, the elimination half-life can be significantly extended, and treatment such as dialysis may be considered based on the patient's renal function and the extent of overdose. Mechanism of Action Flacainide is a class 1C antiarrhythmic that binds to the voltage-gated sodium channels of the myocardium, slowing depolarization and prolonging phase 0 of the action potential. This effect decreases the conduction velocity of cardiac impulses, which can be beneficial in treating arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation. However, in toxicity, flacainide can cause bradydysrhythmias, atrioventricular nodal blockade, ventricular tachycardia, and rate-dependent QRS widening due to its potent sodium channel blocking properties. Other agents that block cardiac sodium channels should be considered as a differential diagnosis. For example, Tricyclic antidepressants, such as amitriptyline and nortriptyline, block sodium channels in the heart, which can lead to QRS prolongation and increased risk of arrhythmias and overdose. Other class 1 antiarrhythmics, such as lidocaine, class 1b, quinidine, and procainamide, class 1a, and propafenone, class 1c, also block cardiac sodium channels, each with varying degrees of potency and effects on cardiac conduction. Cocaine blocks sodium channels in the heart, leading to similar EKG changes as seen with class 1 antiarrhythmics, including QRS prolongation and increased risk of arrhythmias. Diphenhydramine is an antihistamine that can block sodium channels at high doses leading to conduction disturbances and arrhythmias. Venlafaxine is a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor SNRI, that can block sodium channels in overdose, leading to QRS prolongation and arrhythmias. Propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker that can inhibit sodium channels at high concentrations, potentially leading to conduction disturbances. Anti-malarial drugs such as chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine can block sodium channels and prolong the QT interval, increasing the risk of arrhythmias, especially in overdose. Now let's discuss about assessments and plan for this case. Assessment the clinical presentation and electrocardiogram findings strongly suggest flecainide toxicity. Flecainide, as a class 1C antiarrhythmic agent, has a well-documented potential to induce significant cardiac disturbances. These include bradydysrhythmias, atrioventricular nodal blockade, ventricular tachycardia, and rate-dependent QRS widening. The initial presentation, characterized by a QRS duration of 240 milliseconds, far exceeds the upper limits of the normal range, signifying severe cardiac sodium channel blockade. 
the EKG's wide complex irregular rhythm and left bundle branch block morphology, particularly at a heart rate of 90 beats per minute, indicate ventricular tachycardia or a ventricular rhythm slower than expected, further supporting the diagnosis of flecainide toxicity. The significance of the QRS duration in this context cannot be overstated. In the setting of flecainide toxicity, QRS prolongation serves as a key indicator of the severity of sodium channel blockade and by extension the degree of myocardial compromise. Class 1C agents like flexanide exert pharmacological effects by inhibiting fast sodium channels, slowing cardiac depolarization and impulse conduction. This mechanism underlies both the therapeutic and toxic effects of the drug. Treatment Response The patient's clinical improvement following the administration of sodium bicarbonate provides a practical illustration of the therapeutic principles. Sodium bicarbonate increases extracellular sodium concentration which competes with flecainide for the fast sodium channels in the heart. This competition facilitates the dissociation of flecainide from the sodium channels thereby reversing the toxic effects on cardiac conduction. The observed narrowing of the QRS complex is a direct and favorable outcome of this intervention, reflecting the restoration of more normal cardiac conduction patterns. This response to treatment not only aligns with the guidelines recommendations but also reinforces the importance of timely and appropriate management in cases of flecinide toxicity. The efficacy of sodium bicarbonate in this scenario underscores its role as a cornerstone in treating cardiac sodium channel blocker toxicity with the mechanism of action directly addressing the pathophysiological basis of the condition. Plan, continue monitoring. Continuous ECG monitoring is imperative given the initial severity of the patient's presentation. Monitoring should persist for at least six hours post-exposure to assess for any recurrence of toxicity or arrhythmias. Admission for 24-hour intensive cardiac monitoring is recommended if any signs of ongoing toxicity, such as persistent arrhythmias or QRS widening, are observed. This approach ensures that any deterioration in the patient's condition can be promptly addressed. The positive response to sodium bicarbonate in this case reinforces its role as the primary treatment for flecainide toxicity. Sodium bicarbonate competes with flecainide for cardiac sodium channels, facilitating the dissociation of the drug from these channels and thereby reversing its toxic effects on cardiac conduction. The initial dosing of 1 to 2 milliequivalents per kilogram has proven effective. The dosing should be adjusted based on ongoing clinical assessment, ECG changes, and arterial blood gas results to ensure the maintenance of optimal cardiac function and electrolyte balance. Hypertonic saline. In cases where sodium bicarbonate therapy is insufficient to achieve desired clinical improvement or hypokalemia becomes a concern, hypertonic saline may be considered an adjunct therapy. This option provides an alternative means of increasing extracellular sodium concentration, which can help further mitigate sodium channel blockade. Additional therapies. For patients exhibiting severe toxicity or those unresponsive to conventional treatments, additional interventions such as intravenous lipid emulsion therapy and ECMO should be considered. Intravenous lipid emulsion therapy may be beneficial in cases where there is significant myocardial depression, acting by sequestering lipophilic toxins and facilitating their redistribution away from target tissues. ECMO provides hemodynamic support in instances of refractory cardiac failure, offering a bridge to recovery or decision-making in critically ill patients. While flecainide is not effectively cleared by hemodialysis, considering alternative routes of elimination such as prolonged and repeated dialysis, may be warranted in patients with renal failure or when there is significant drug accumulation. Follow-up and disposition. The discharge decision should be based on a comprehensive clinical reassessment, including stable vital signs, normalization of ECG findings, and resolution of symptoms. Patients should be educated on the importance of avoiding potential re-exposure and the need for regular follow-up particularly if they will continue on flecainide or similar medications for their underlying condition. Wrap up. Flecainide toxicity is characterized by cardiac sodium channel blockade, leading to a prolonged QRS interval on an EKG, which is a key indicator of toxicity severity and the risk of ventricular arrhythmias. The primary treatment is sodium bicarbonate, which reverses the blockade by increasing extracellular sodium concentration. 
In severe cases, adjunctive therapies such as intravenous lipid emulsion and ECMO may be considered especially if there is an inadequate response to sodium bicarbonate or the presence of refractory arrhythmias or hemodynamic instability. Additionally, supportive care, patient education and adherence to prescribed dosages are crucial for managing and preventing toxicity. Thanks for watching Medical Toxicology. Take care.